These are the Zoe ZTMD1 LCR tweezers. Many on YouTube have claimed they are a real game changer. In this video, we're going to find out if that's truly the case. When you purchase them online, they come packaged like this. A high-quality box with even more inside. You'll find a nice protective carrying case. The LCR tweezers themselves. A small user guide with details about the expected precision and a USB-C charging cable, which also doubles as a tool for firmware updates. Additionally, spare metal probes for the tweezers are included. When you power it on using the third button, this is what appears on the screen. A long press on the middle button opens the main menu, where you can adjust the language, device volume, and brightness. You can also perform device calibration, restore factory settings, and check the installed firmware version. Resistance test, 0.1 ohm, quite precise. 0.33 ohm, not as precise, but still within specifications. 1 ohm, very precise. For higher resistances, 1 mega ohm and 3 mega ohms also perform well. Now, Let's see how it handles capacitance. When it comes to ESR or internal resistance, these tweezers use a sine wave signal at 100 Hz, 1 kHz, or 10 kHz. By default, it operates at 1 kHz. So, what does it say about this old, long-used capacitor? Let's compare it with the FNIRC TC3 component tester. As we review the FNIRC results, let's double check what the Zoe tweezers report. The readings differ significantly, but knowing how the Zoe measures ESR, I'm highly convinced it provides the more accurate measurement. Measuring components while they are connected within a circuit doesn't always yield accurate results. It depends on other components in parallel with the one being measured. For example, take this resistor with a value of 1 ohm 3. It should measure 10 kilo ohms, but the Zoe shows around 1 kilo ohm. In addition to this, you can use either auto mode or manual mode. In manual mode, you can select between resistance, capacitance, inductance, Diode mode, which cannot test LEDs but works well for other diodes and transistors. And continuity check, which functions perfectly. And now, it's time to see what's inside. After opening the device, we can see how it's constructed internally. There aren't too many components, as everything is managed by a single microcontroller and a few operational amplifiers. Naturally, there's a lithium polymer battery powering the device. Looking closer at the circuit boards in the photos, we notice two operational amplifiers. One appears to be a CMOS op amp, while the other seems to be a logarithmic op amp. I might be mistaken, as it's challenging to find data sheets for the markings on these chips. The third IC, which looks like an op amp, is actually the firmware chip. Now, Here's a particularly impressive detail. This small device is powered by a robust ARM MPUFPU chip. Just take a look at its datasheet. Its first page alone demonstrates how powerful it is. In my opinion, it's far more powerful than what such a device would typically require, showcasing the quality and capability of this tool. So, is it worth it? Absolutely. It's an excellent device that justifies every cent of its cost. It's truly impressive how well it performs. Do you need it? Not necessarily. You can handle most tasks with a basic multimeter. However, this is a fantastic instrument to have in your toolbox. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and stay creative.
See you next time.